Okay, so it is seven o'clock. So okay. um, I'm going to open us in prayer in just a few minutes. I'm going to ask everyone to put themselves on mute, except for Elizabeth, um, who will be teaching. We're so excited to have her um, teach tonight. Elizabeth has been teaching the Bible for years and years and has been connected with BSF and other parachurch organizations. Um, and she's an elder in our congregation, and we're so excited to have her um, help us start the year off right with doing um, personal devotion time, personal quiet time. So um, Elizabeth, we're, we're glad you're here with us. And I'm going to um, pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you for the gift of this day, for the gift of your word. And uh, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide and lead us as we um, dive deeper into what it means to have a, a personal quiet time with you. Pray that you would guide Elizabeth and um, instruct all of us with your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Valina. Okay, well, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you all are here, and I hope people will join us as we go. Um, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes giving you a little bit of background. Um, as Valina mentioned, that I was in Bible Study Fellowship International for well, since 1996, I am taking a year off this year. I was in many locations and wherever we moved in the Navy, there was a class. And so it was really my steady eddy, even when we changed churches and denominations over the years at how was in the Navy. Um, I was a substitute teaching leader for the evening women's class in Virginia Beach for five years. And that class size was about 350 to 450 people at the time. And BSF, Bible Study Fellowship, I will say, is the best Bible study in the world. Um, it started with five women in California over 70 years ago. And now, this year, has 400,000 men, women, and children that study their method with them in the world. Um, it's non-denominational. It's multi-generational. It's international with lessons and discussion groups in English, Chinese, and Spanish. It's grown a lot in 70 years. So it's really what I credit as giving me um, biblical literacy. And um, this presentation, um, there are six seminars that are offered throughout the year that the substitute teaching leader teaches to the class. And this one that I'm teaching tonight is based on the one from Bible Study Fellowship called Personal Quiet Time. Um, and it's been modified for this group and also for, um, for teaching on Zoom, which I had not, I mean, I've teach, taught on Zoom before, but not this seminar. So I am going to share my screen with you. And <clears throat> I will just start at the, uh, start at the beginning. What is a personal quiet time? It is, okay. Oh dear, hang on you. All right, hold on. This is supposed to be uh, all right. Well, this worked before. I'm trying to get to my next slide. Hold on, I'm sorry, guys. Elizabeth, I've had issues with that as well. If you go down to the bottom left of the screen when it's up, um, it's almost like an invisible, um, an invisible arrow that you that you hit, or you can stay there. And oh, oh! Do you see it? I got it. I've got to get the. There we go. Yes. What is a personal quiet time and why do you need to have one? Um, it's a specific time each day away from other people, other responsibilities and other distractions for the purpose of knowing God, worshiping him and uh, listening to him. It enables you to interact with the living God through his word and through prayer. Experience um, growth in your relationship with Jesus Christ as you deepen your relationship of who he is, and it also enables you to respond to him as he speaks to you. And why is this important? Well, personal quiet, um, personal quiet time is a maturing process. 
And what is the primary reason to study the Bible? It is to know God in his fullness and to know what it is that he has revealed about himself. Through studying the Bible, you come to know God personally and not just knowing facts about him. The more you know God, the more you love him. The more you love him, the more you want to know him and follow him. The closer you follow him, the more you become like him. And becoming more like Jesus is God's goal for every Christian. So in-depth Bible study is critical for those who want to be close to and be more like Jesus Christ. And what happens if you don't communicate with your spouse, your children, your boss, your friends? Um, there are misunderstandings, there's error, there's conflict, there's distance. So what happens when we neglect our um, time in God's word? When you're running on fumes from whenever your last lesson was, uh, relationship with God becomes more distant. Um, I, might not, I may no longer hear his voice. Um, I will start the day without his guidance and my thinking may end up being in error. So here are Oh boy, where's that little arrow be? There we go. Here are a few scriptures that are um, give us God's perspective on our need to spend time with him in Bible study and in prayer. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. This reminds us of God's love and that um, he guides us. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. That's Psalm 143, and that teaches us to do God's will. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. That's from Psalm 119, because God expects us to obey what is written in his word. And um, Jesus answered when he's interacting with Satan, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that's Matthew 4, 4 that quotes um, Deuteronomy 8, 3. Well, this sums up everything. Real life is found in God's word. We have a need in our heart to know God, and we have a great big God who wants to be known, and we'll take the rest of our time learning how to do that. So this method is called the three question method or the three R's. And the first question is, what does it say? and you read it to figure out what it says. The second one is, what does it mean? You take time to reflect on what you've read. And the third is, what does it mean to me? That's a response. Um, it's easy to learn. It's very effective because it moves us towards spiritual maturity. Writing the important points during your quiet time helps you remember what God says to you. So you want to keep a notebook or journal um, for your daily quiet time. You can use whatever it is that you want. Um, on Zoom, uh, the most effective way is going to be um, kind of doing it together. So it takes less time for you to do your own quiet time than it does to, to learn about it with me this evening. So the first step is to choose a book to read. And ideally, you would read it first, but that is not always practical. Um, it, it enables you to read an entire book, but one short passage at a time, somewhere around 10 to 15 um, verses at a time. And remember that the goal is to get to know God better uh, and to respond to him rightly, not to get through a reading plan. So I am going to share with you um, biblical reading times. This is 
average reading times of various books. So that take a look at some of these things. Some are absolutely not practical to read first. I mean, you could read for three and a half hours of Genesis, but um, for the larger books, I would just go ahead and start with the small studies. On the smaller books, the epistles at the end uh, that are like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, go ahead and read those first once through before you start with your studying. Okay, so step one is, um, what does it say? Um, make sure I'm lined up with the right thing. Okay, first thing first, this is God's word and everything in it is true. That's where you start. Everything in it is true. Um, you always want to pray before you start reading a passage. You ask God to give you understanding of his person and his word. Ask him to strengthen your relationship with him and to show you how to apply his word to your life. So I will just open us in a quick prayer because we're about to start this process and it can be very, very simple. Lord, Heavenly Father, let this group hear you and come near to you through this time in your word. Open your scriptures to us and open our minds to the messages that you would have us get. Amen. Short, sweet, to the point. So when you're ready to study your small portion of 10 to 15 verses, read the passage slowly to yourself, and then you read the passage out loud. So um, here's what to look for as you read. You're going to notice words or phrases that stand out to you as important. This is where the personal part comes in, because I don't know how many people we have on this call, but that's as many different responses as we would get to this and the things that you notice. You want to notice repeated words. Um, you want to definitely notice words that describe God or Jesus, words that we would call his attributes or characteristics. And then notice any commands, warnings, or promises. We're going to do Matthew 28, 11 to 20. Now, Jim did Matthew 28, 18, 19, 20 in service yesterday. Um, but two or three verses is not quite enough to demonstrate this method. So we're going to go with about 10 verses. And right now, um, I'm going to have you read that part, Matthew 28, 11 to 20 silently to yourself. And I'm going to give you about 45 seconds. Okay, now you reread it to yourself while I read it aloud. If you're, if you're studying on your own, you would read it to yourself out loud. In this case, I'll read it, you read it. I mean, you read it to yourself and I'm going to read it out loud. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you were to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. 
and this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So now that you've had a chance, um, oh, I would just mention, you would always want to take some time on this step. Because what God's word says is more important than our conclusions, our opinions of it. So I'm going to give you a minute or so. Um, when you, this is kind of what I said before, I'm going to give you a chance to read and make a list of words that stood out to you. And you're going to be looking for those repeated words, promises, commands, warnings, words that describe God and phrases that speak to you. Let me give you just a minute for that. All right. Can a few of you either unmute yourselves or put in the chat um, just a few of these words that you might have seen, just phrases? Uh, let me see what's in the chat. Okay. Yes, Hunter, it is. <laughs> A word that I saw over and over was soldiers, but then the last part was disciples, um, make disciples. Yeah, good. Anything else? I'm going to share you my list, so don't worry, you won't go without, And but don't be shy either. Y'all are welcome to unmute yourself if you want to share. Well, <clears throat> I noticed that in the second part, there's a whole series of verbs. Go, make, baptize, teach, and obey. So there's a lot of action going on there. Good, good, good. Give a star to the husband. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing because I want to show you that I have a list of attributes that I, I want you to be able to see and because sometimes having that list is much more helpful. Um, so attributes of God, there are a lot of them. And, and I just give that to you to bring it to your attention that you can always, when you're looking at God's word, you can look at your attributes and find those attributes. You'll start to get very good at being able to spot them. These are on the website. You can download them 
for your use. Um, all right, now I'll share you what, uh, with I, what I came up with. So this is just mine. Yours is gonna be completely different. I actually go through kind of what's happening. Women can go to the disciples, but the guards go to the city and the chief priests. Um, the chief priest dev uh, devised a plan, gave soldiers a large sum of money. The money pays for the lie, which is say the disciples stole the body. The um, chief priest said, we'll fix it if the governor finds out, which saves the guards' lives. For those of you who don't know, if guards fail to do their duty, they get um, thanked with execution. Um, guards accept the bribe and the lie is circulated to this day. 11 disciples go to Galilee. I sort of noticed that it's where Jesus had told them to go and they did it. Uh, they saw Jesus, some worshiped and some doubted. Jesus says authority in heaven and on earth is mine. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching to obey everything. And then the final is I am with you to the end of the age. Notice I use a lot of abbreviations. I use a lot of signs. You use what works for you because this is a, a um, an audience of one. You do what is going to work for you. You do this only to please yourself. I also want to bring a little attention to the word therefore, because therefore is always going to be a hinge. And you can see it in scripture. It's a hinge between a doctrinal truth and um, an application. So look at what Jesus said right beforehand. And it said, he, he's all authority in heaven on earth has been given to him. Therefore, the action is what Hal mentioned, go and make disciples of all the nations. So that's just one little thing that you can keep in mind as you study. So um, that finishes step one. And once you've read it and written what phrases that stood out to you, um, then you're ready to go into step two. Step two, the question is, what does it mean? So um, you reflect on what the passage actually means. And this requires taking time to prayerfully think. Ask God to help you answer the following questions. What does the passage teach about God's character and his values? Do you see any attributes? What does the passage teach about people, human nature, or oneself? Um, and then are there any personal insights for you to notice? I will tell you that it doesn't even matter what biblical passage you're studying. God will speak to you through it on what you need for that day. So today he speaks through Matthew 28. But if you were reading the Psalms, he would do the same thing with that. So rest assured um, that the scriptures are alive and active and they are sharper than a double-edged sword. So you're free to study whatever it is and you will still have God teaching you. You do not have to get upset about, maybe I'm not studying the right thing. The other thing is, is um, the attributes that you might pick may be very different depending on how you're feeling that day. So you may pick up on attributes that are there that mean something more to you. So you wanna write your thoughts on, your ref on the reflection part. Uh, remember, um, what you include in your list of what it says will directly affect what you think about the passage as you reflect upon it. So if you go back and look at the things that you wrote for, you can either look at the scriptures itself, or you can look at what you wrote on your list to determine the next step of reflection. So I'm going to give you another minute for you to reflect on what you wrote and I'll display my own thoughts afterwards and um, consider the things on the screen, what the passages teach. So let's start now with I'll give you uh, one and a half minutes.
Okay. Does anyone want to unmute themselves or put it in the chat? One or two things that they might have come up with. Mike said, I was struck with the fear and doubt that was created in order to deal with difficult truths. Ooh, that's good. Well done, Mike. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? Yes, I can, I, Sue. Yeah, but that was Megan, not Mike. Oh, Mike, Megan, good for you. All right, <laughs> Sue. Well, hello, Hunter, favorite student. But um, so that brings me to this. I, in verse 20, as a teacher, um, where, it, where it reads, I am teaching them everything I have commanded of you. So I was always reminded that he had to command me first. I was commanded of first. And then when I was commanded first, then I had to teach them to obey everything that I was commanded of first. Good so for I, you. I really had to always pay attention to what God's word said and what yeah. he commanded me to do because I had that responsibility to um, obey everything that he commanded of me before I could teach them. Well done, Sue. All right, anyone else? Okay. It's okay. You're feeling shy. I'm Terry. I, I was oh, hey, Terry. I was gonna say, uh, the first part of it uh, tells me a couple of things. It tells me that chief priests can sin and lie, uh, you know, 10 commandments. And also uh, the large sum of money tells me that everyone has their price. Mm -hmm. The love of money and the things that it brings is mm -hmm. the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the of all of it, the thing that stood out to me the most or had the most impact on me was all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All. Yeah, you yeah. start with the word all. Yeah. And in yeah. my Bible, it's written in red. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mine is mine is too. So, so you know, you know, that means something to me personally tonight, today. But in context, he was telling them, look, I'm the boss. You got to listen to me. That's right. This because he has authority in right. heaven and earth. Yep. Thank you. That, Terry, that was great. So, Appreciated that. Can, and, I, can I rip off of that? Sure. So I was I was thinking similar to Terry, and I was wondering why these two sections are, you know, next to each other, because they're a little unrelated, they appear. It appears kind of a jump, but I think that ties them together. The the one the first part is about this lie that um actually looks pretty powerful because you know it says it's the plan went off as they planned and it stayed around um but the next part is about you know jesus talking about himself the truth and um he says he'll be with us to the end of the age and if he has all authority then ultimately you know although the lie and the truth are going to continue to tangle the truth will ultimately win yeah yeah great and then Lauren put in the, um, I mean, Lori Talty put in the um, chat that she was struck with that even in the midst of deceit and lies, God's truth stands. And that's exactly right. God's truth triumphs, I would almost say. So you guys got a lot out of that. And I'm glad you were willing to share because that's how, um, I mean, that's what brings richness to the scriptures and knowing that and I'm giving you permission that no two people's personal quiet time is going to be the same. And the object is never to rush or to achieve a reading plan. Um, in this practice, in this practice, it's get to get to know God better. So let me go back and share my screen. And I'm going to show you what I came up with so that um, you can see all of it because I answered, I wanted to sh give you demonstrations of, what God, what this passage has for God's character and its values, what it teaches about people or myself and insight. So here we go. Oops, wrong one. Ugh. 
So these are my reflections. What does a passage teach about God or Jesus? That God, Jesus is sovereign over heaven and earth and his truth is unstoppable. That all people and all nations need Jesus. That Jesus' commands are to be obeyed God is three in one. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even though the word Trinity is never used in the Bible. Jesus is always with me, and he's always with John. Uh, and then attributes are accessible, eternal, omnipresent, guide, sovereign. It could be a, a lot more. So let me just mention something about your reflections, is that where you are in life is going to come out in your personal quiet time. If you're grieving, um, like I am for a son that died earlier uh, in the year. Um, it's going to pop out in my personal quiet time. If I'm anxious about something, if you are excited about something because something exciting is about to come down the pike, you would expect it to come out through your personal quiet time. And I'm going to encourage that and tell you that that is a-okay. All right, continuing, what does a passage teach about human nature or me? So I think Terry Dale and I think a little bit uh, the same. <laughs> Leaders with something to fear are easily corruptible. Making choices when facing situations, you either have a choice. You can be like the women who went off to seek God kind of by finding the other disciples, or you seek help from the world like the guards did. People are tempted to cover their wrongdoings and sins. And some maintain, um, some people maintain a hardened heart regardless of the evidence. So I will say one thing that Bible study fellowship, the one thing that I learned the most is I, I, I had an excellent education in what human nature is. And this is part of how I did it. Um, promises, warnings, insights. I saw them and I labeled them as such, but if I were doing this on my own, I wouldn't. Um, but God is sovereign over the world and our nation. And that's a promise because he's sovereign over the world. Um, Jesus is always present. He, that's one of his, um, his characteristics. And that's a promise. Corrupted leaders corrupt others. That's a warning. I saw that as the guards were in a pickle and now they're corrupted because they went to the leaders and corrupt leaders corrupt others. Large tasks that affect change have multiple steps, go baptize and teach. So I saw that as an insight. And another insight is that nations are ordained by God. And that was one that just kind of surprised me that came out of my study. So that completes step two. And it's time to go on to step three, which is we've done, what does it say? We've done, what does it mean? Now we're going on to what does it mean to me? Or we wanna know how to respond. In this step, we take action by praying about and applying what we learn, how we respond to the passage and how is it speaking into your life today? So ways to respond is you can pray the words of the passage back to God, or you can write an original prayer. You can write application questions for you to ponder. The question can be affirming or what I would call positive, or it can be a negative one that makes you squirm. And if you sense God is telling you something, something specific to you, write that down. So now take another moment. How are we doing on time, V? We're doing great. Take another moment to respond to um, what you've written in terms of your insights. Consider your um, reflections, what it means, and take it to what it means to you using one of these responses. And I'll give you... I'll give you a minute because I want to I want to um, hear what people have to say afterwards. So we'll share for a few minutes. <clears throat>
Okay. Does anyone want to share what they came up with as a response? Uh, yeah, Elizabeth, this is Donnie. Hi, Donnie. How are you? Fine. Um, you know, one of the things that really stands out to me um, in where I am on my spiritual walk is, and I've learned this from some of the other Bible studies I was doing on Tuesday morning, is right after the therefore. I mean, to me, that's, that's Christ talking to me as a foot soldier for Christ. He's telling me it's time to get off the pot and go out there and do the things I've commanded you to do. He's telling the, you know, he's telling the disciples, all the whole walk with the disciples, he's showing them these things. Now it's all said and done. He's come back. It's like, all right, guys, it's time to get it done. Right. Yeah. Go out, put on the armor and go out there and, and be the soldier for Christ that you need to be. Yeah. Soldier for Christ that Donnie needs to be. Good. Good, Donnie. And at some point, he's going to reveal exactly how he wants you to do it, if he hasn't already. You know, that's, that's it's very specific. God speaks to you specifically in your situation, and you can expect it. You can expect him to. All right. Anyone else want to share or put something in the in the um, chat? This is, this is Megan. I'll follow up. It's somewhat a big follows what Donnie just said. Um, <clears throat> I was struck the same thing with truths. And, and the fact that the, the women were so brave to go to the go ahead and go to the tomb to begin with is to, to tackle your fears in light of the truth. And yeah. Not be afraid of stepping into things um, that you might, that might be difficult or um, complicated, but just step forward. Yeah, Megan, that's great. That's great insight. Anyone else? Diane, I did not get what you put in there. Uh, God requires action from me. I was at, that was one of your... I think it was previous, but certainly affects this one too. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, right. and, I was, and I was thinking about um, that there's quite this balance between sovereignty that God is going to... Um, he's got a plan. He's going to work it all out, but yet he still requires us to participate in that plan. Yeah, exactly right. And I will just say as an addition that if that God's plan does go forward, um, and if you do not say yes to him, he will pick somebody else and you will probably be aware of it. So um, be careful, I'm not be careful, it's not a warning. It's, it, it's a privilege to serve the Lord and be willing to say yes when he asks you to do something. And it might be some, it's gonna be some, it, you're gonna start with something you love to do and he'll train you up on doing things that you might not be, have as much confidence in. Okay, so now let's go back and share the screen and finish this up. We're almost done. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what I wrote. So here's an example of a prayer. And I honestly, I just it made sense to me. I prayed it back from these, um, these various scriptures. Sovereign Lord Jesus, I praise you because you have the power. Uh, let me just read it here. You have the power to overcome evil and build your kingdom. Keep me from the temptation to lie to others. Make me a truth teller regardless of the consequences. I pray that where you tell me to go, I will go willingly. Show me evidence of your sovereignty over the world in the U.S. today. Thank you for being with me every moment of my life now and to the very end of the age. I was using the scriptures here and modified this to make it more personal to me. Totally easy to do. Um, and very effective because it's a way of praying the scriptures for yourself. Now, the next thing is uh, my application questions. So how, I'll tell you how I write application questions is I look at the characters 
in the scriptures that I'm studying and I, I, I um, put myself in their position. So identify with various characters. So here's one is, and I got to tell you, I'm a little bit more on the negative side. So God tells me, okay, make it positive too. And so I've written each of these questions with a positive spin. When have I been tempted to abuse my position of leadership? That's a negative. And I have been because I'm very, God is realistic with me and he's tough on me because, um, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's from 1 John 8. And so as soon as I start to get to the point where I'm thinking that is not a problem for me, I would never do this, then I'm setting myself up to submit to sin. So I never, I never um, think I've mastered this until I'm pushing up daisies. I always think that I am going to be susceptible to doing something that would bring discredit to God. So that's the negative. How have I been tempted to abuse my position of leadership? Or how was I faithful to my task as a leader this week? Everybody's a leader. And so, um, B, can you let that person in? All right. Um, so that's the one that, that that's a positive. And I've been tempted both to abuse my position and I've been paid faithful to um, my, le my leadership roles. When have I or am I tempted to lie to save my own skin? That's negative. Then thinking of the guards in that crane. The first question definitely had to do with chief priests. The second one is I'm trying to identify with the guards. Or when did I tell the truth at risk to myself, knowing it would please God? Same question, two different ways, two different ways to think about it. And then the last one is how will I participate in spreading the unstoppable truth of Jesus in my realm of influence today, this week, or this year? And I would tell you that this is one of them is I am helping to spread the unstoppable truth by helping you learn how to study the Bible by this method. So that completes step three and your personal quiet time. Nobody sees what you write. It's an audience of one, you and God. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about practicalities. It is helpful to establish a place that is supplied with pens, papers, notebooks, your Bible, your reading glasses, your clock, your watch, whatever, all in one place, a certain chair, a certain desk, someplace in the house. You wanna to try to remove all excuses of having to get up and wander around the house searching for what you need, which always eats up 10 to 15 minutes because you get distracted with other things. Um, unless you're doing a study on the smartphone, I would consider keeping it away during the personal quiet time because that's another way for 12 minutes to be evaporated in no time. Um, the timing, when should you have a personal quiet time? Well, first thing in the morning is ideal because it lets God tell you about your day even before you get going. But any time of day that suits your schedule, then that can become habitual for you is going to be perfectly good. Now, I also wanted to share a couple of things with you. These are resources. Um, this is actually a Bible Study Fellowship product. It's available on all, uh, wherever you would get apps. This is an app called Word Go. And um, it's a little awkward getting started, but I think they've done a good job on it. You can pick something to study and every day, and you can pick the length of time you're gonna study, like 15 minutes a day. And when that happens, it will give you fewer questions than if you've said you're going to study for 30 minutes. Um, it includes your scripture. It includes the question. It includes the notes. And if it has this play audio right here, it has a lecture as well. So word go, you can try that. It's, it's awesome. Uh, the other thing that I really like and I would recommend is... Um, the Bible Project. So the Bible Project has, um, uh, these are 
uh, what is it called? Oh yeah, book overviews. So these are really, really interesting. If you're gonna go to a book and you wanna know what it means up front, they're very accurate. They're very, the videos are usually about eight to 12 minutes. Uh, the larger books are broken into several different videos, but it's a great place to take a look and see um, what something means, what's the point of it, kind of give you a tip off before you start reading some uh, larger book. So that's called bibleproject.com and it's under their explore. So it just in conclusion, we grow spiritually and mature in our faith as we study God's word. So try using this message, um, this method each day for your own personal study. And with that, I will stop sharing and ask Melina to take over. So um, thank you, Elizabeth. This has been really helpful. I was just wondering, um, would you be willing to go back and just walk through the outline of just in a summary of what you do as in a quiet time? Yes. That would be so, awesome. All right. So the first thing I do is I read the scripture, 10, 15 verses at the most. You're going to take something large and make it small. So I'm going to read the scripture once. I might read it out loud a second time or quietly, slowly. The second step is, uh, oh, and while I do that, or after I do it, I go back and I write my little list of important words, things that stand out. Then the second step, I'm going to reflect on what it is that I read, and I'm going to look for attributes. I'm going to notice words that are important to me. I'm going to notice repeated words and any commands or promises. And as I reflect on that, I will um, look for what does the passage teach about God or Jesus? What does it teach about humankind, human nature? And make note of any warnings, promises, or personal insights. And step three is to determine what does it mean to me? And so I'm going to respond to it either in prayer or in writing application questions, or if God's telling me something specific, if you're a poetry writer, I mean, however you respond to him is very personal also. But the point is, is to get into the word every single day and let God speak to you because you'll only be as mature as much as you know this. Mm -hmm. And uh, Valina on the website is a template that can be used for this method. And I've written some of the things I just went over to with you in a review on that template. So if you want to go to fbcnorfolk.org and find it there. Yes, um, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's um, so there are two handouts for the class or two downloadable handouts um, that are just above where the Zoom classes are listed. Um, one is attributes of God and the other is a personal quiet time template, um, which I would highly recommend. This is a, a wonderful outline of how to do a quiet time. Practice, practice. Yeah. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly first before you get better at it. So I wanna encourage everyone and certainly um, my email, feel free to send me an email. If you need help with this, you've got some questions, you want to do something on a personal basis, I'm happy to answer questions. Are there any other questions from anyone else? I don't see any in the chat room. Um, are there any questions that someone would like to unmute themselves and ask Elizabeth? Elizabeth, what will be your next topic? Oh, <laughs> well, Lena and I will just have to speak about that. All right. I could, te hey, I could teach you homiletics if you all want to know homiletics. I'm happy to do that. Uh, sharing the gospel. That's always a you, fun one. You, you put the lesson together. I'll be there. <laughs> right. 
Thank you. That was a, a, a really good job. Great You're lesson. Well, thank you, Sue. That. Thank you. Any other questions on even practicalities or anything? Okay. Great. Well, in hearing none, thanks. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And Elizabeth, thank you for sharing your um, your expertise with us. And um, I hope all of you have a wonderful, blessed night. Thank you.